Squadron 42 am I right that is going to be the Starfield killer amazing gameplay let us know down in the comments also subscribe like and comment all these videos it really helps so what have you all thought of 2953 CitizenCon? I think it was a great success. Again, I'm trying to stay level-headed because I want to see where this goes, see how long it takes. And at the same time, I don't know if a lot of you have seen, but when they released the footage for Squadron 42 to YouTube, they also sent out emails stating that they've set up the progress tracker and updated it. I'm very interested to see that they have actually updated it for the polishing of Squadron 42 to end mid-December. Whether or not that happens, it looks like they've updated a lot of stuff to uh, end mid-December, so maybe they're going for a 2023-2024 release. I don't know. I want to know what you all think about this down in the comments, but let's get into the main content of this video. Thank you for choosing my channel for the Star Citizen content that you wish to see. Today, we're going to be going over managing and engineering positions on said ships. Now, a lot of us are going to expect ships like the Carrick, um, the Javelin, the Idris, the Polaris, and the Perseus to be easy to operate, even though the Perseus only needs a crew of two. Now, there is a lot of detail to go into with these. I'm not going to go right into depth with these, but I am going to touch on the topic that they have really thought about the processes and the amount of time that you're going to need to spend working on your ship. Now, this is either a C1 or an uh, C2 or an M2, and this here is the engineering panel and you can control items do room control all of the shebang so the green lines i believe to be fuses and relays around your ship and these fuses and relays need to be 100 percent operational now you can see people moving around your ship you can see the degradation of components you can pretty much see anything involving the engineering position and whether or not you need to take a component out and repair it or do some form of work to it now this here is just amazing to see that they're going to be doing this but again it's going to be a massive drawback on a lot of people since the fact that you know it's going to be hard to pull crews together and get people into these positions i myself find this very entertaining and i think like i've stated in the past it's going to take training to show people how to do these said functions now from what I understand, some ships won't have all the power in their power supplies to power everything in the ship. So going from that, if you have fuses on your ship, well, which they will, if a fuse blows, it will stop a certain function on your ship, depending on where that fuse sends its power or its control. So you could lose thrusters, you could lose weapons, you could lose control to one side of the ship, you could lose control to the habitation, sort of um, uh, the environment of the ship the gravity um whatever keeps the life alive so like oxygen and whatnot now they went into great depth with this because you can see people moving around your ship you can see doors opening and closing you can open and close doors yourself and as you can see this is where a relay goes in said ship and that person has destroyed it severing that connection so a part of that ship wherever that goes to will then affect the rest of the ship not being to have some operational or function and as you can see here they're going into components having a look at the component degradation and doing some form of repair if needed so this is where you're going to need multiple people in these positions depending on the ship size obviously if you have something like a javelin or an idris or a polaris you're going to have multiple levels multiple decks on a ship so you're going to have to have multiple upon multiple people because they take like 70 to 80 people on the javelin and you're going to need all these people to be doing all this work for your ship to be operational so whether or not that makes sense to you um, it's something that you're going to have to think about in the future and as you can see that person's left that component door open so now the engineer's gone and closed it and they have to keep closing and opening doors now as you can see they've grabbed another relay gone back over to this room and put the relay in place to complete the connection to the part of the ship that they need operation to like I said I'm not going to go into detail but I want to see what you all think about this the people who own capital ships Idris's um, Carricks, anything that is a big ship and I know this may be a drawback on a lot of people but I think this is a good step in the right direction they want it to be like this this here is room control you can control a bunch of functions with this 
item here. You can also suck the oxygen out of a room to stop fires. If you have in potential intruders who don't have armor on, you can suck the oxygen out of the room and potentially kill them. I'm pretty sure you can also lock doors and whatnot and open doors, close doors from this position, which is awesome. I think this is a good thing. I'm enjoying seeing all of this stuff being uh, presented to people. Now, they did show you some footage earlier on in the year, the demonstrating like being able to take oxygen out of a room and stop fires and potential threats, which is a really good step. And to see that they've done this and taken this um, step with this um, sort of UI um, and the three dimensional viewing that you can have around the ship to be able to freely move around is fantastic. It's going to make it so much easier for people to be able to actually have some form of control and see what's actually happening around a ship in real time. I think it's just going to cause so much havoc in some aspects, but it's going to cause so much freedom and a lot of opportunities for people to learn the functionality of a ship and really get into the understanding of it. Like, remember, these are going to be full positions and ships. People are going to have to control these items. They're going to have to stock up on relays and fuses. Like, keep sort of like, when you go salvaging, you're going to have to keep, I would say, some sort of material on board to be able to, like, repair and um, do some sort of control on degradation of components and again as you see here this person has taken off their mask their helmet and this person has gone ahead and sucked the oxygen out of the room causing this person to asphyxiate and potentially die losing their health as you can see temperatures dropped and their health is just absolutely tanking and then the person cycles the um, oxygen back on and all is good so moving on from there we're going into the mini map star map now as you can see they've gone from the um, space station or the planet into the Carrick and as you can see in the top left they got some sort of a mini map showing doors and whatnot the modules what I found very interesting with the star map is that you can click and it actually selects each individual cargo bay of the Carrick highlighting it so potentially knowing that with this is a modular ship it may eventually be implemented I'm not sure but as you can see here doors and um, corridors around the ship now this is going to make it easy to navigate around ships like people who jump in the caterpillar and haven't jumped in it for a while such as myself and friends or people who have never been in one and just don't know where the bridge is or to sort of function and walk around the ship especially if you jump in a ship like the Carrick and you've never been in one you do have some form of an idea but it's just better see how that cargo bay was sort of highlighted then I found that very interesting and yeah but again, like this is a massive step in the right direction. I think they've always needed mini maps in Star Citizen, and I think this is going to be a massive plus for people who are unable to find their way around a ship, who need to get somewhere fast, or even if they need to hide somewhere when someone's potentially intruding on the ship. Have a look where the cargo bay is, engineering bay, just making it so much easier for people to navigate and not have to guess at where they are going. So, like I said, I'm all for this. I'm massively inspired and happy where they're getting everything to be where they need it. Also, the marker data bank. Is that where you can make your own markers and potentially jump to spots? So, like, if I wanted to mark the javelin on Daymar, does that mean I could go ahead and mark it and then eventually go back there in history without having to manually navigate my way there. But again, fantastic to see that they've done this and they've taken this step. I think, again, like I've said, that everything they've done is just quality of life changes and it's going to make an amazing difference to everyone's life in the verse, whether it be on ships or planets or just platforms as well. So I hope you enjoy this. Like I said, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the verse. Bye-bye.